And we're live, everybody. Welcome in. It is Tuesday, March 26, 11.30 a.m. Central. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a minute since we've done a live stream, but we have some pretty big news that I want to go through in the world of Tesla electric vehicles, automotive, all that good stuff. This is pretty crazy. If you've been following this story closely, uh, this marks a very significant shift in how Tesla specifically is handling autonomous software for their cars. Last night, uh, Sawyer Merritt, a fantastic news account on X, follows Tesla very closely in case you're interested. Breaking, Tesla has now started one month free FSD trials in the United States, receive one month trial of full self-driving capability with a new vehicle purchase. Now, full self-driving capability, for those that are not familiar, is FSD, basically allows the car to do all the driving for you in most situations, even though the driver still needs to pay attention and they're responsible for the car. But the shift here is that Tesla has now decided to start giving all new customers a one month free trial for FSD, for new vehicle purchases. On top of that, uh, last night, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, replied to a post from Hallmark's catalog, another great account on X you should follow if you're interested in the Tesla story. Somebody said, uh, Tesla Mojo in this case, the one month uh, FSD beta trial should include any existing owners who have never experienced it. And then uh, Hallmark's catalog said that will happen too. And then Elon Musk replied to that post and said, all US cars that are capable of FSD will be enabled for a one month trial this week. So this is a pretty, it's a pretty significant shift uh, fr from my standpoint anyway. One of the things that has been interesting about this story for the last six, seven years, and so you've had the company, Tesla in this case, that has been touting their self-driving capability for a long time. You know, they, they've been saying that they've been investing heavily in the way the car can drive itself with the eight camera system that it has. But the one problem they've had is that every time they promise that something great's going to happen, it's, you know, it's a small uh, improvement to the software, but it's not this like crazy game changing thing that makes the software truly drive itself in all situations. That seems to have shifted with this version 12 of the FSD software. If you follow this channel closely, you know that I've been testing the software lately and I've been really keeping tabs on how everybody else is experiencing the software. And it looks like there's been a very significant shift where a lot of people were like, it's pretty cool, but it doesn't do everything I need it to, to a lot of people saying, this is freaking crazy. I can't believe it's doing it. And it seems like now Tesla, having gathered that feedback, and I'm sure they have data in the backside that tells them that this software is performing very differently, they're now confident enough to put this in the hands of basically every Tesla driver in the United States by the end of the week to experience one month free uh, of FSD. Another thing I want to talk about, and this is something that uh, from the perspective of pricing, the full, full self-driving software traditionally has been purchased mostly as a full package, which is $12,000. So if we look at here, uh, FSD right now is 12,000. It used to be 15,000. I believe they brought it down to 12,000. But there's also a 199 free uh, uh, per month um, software sign up that you can go for if you decide to experience the software that bypasses the $12,000 upfront fee that Tesla's charging. And I don't think it's very well known. So what's going to happen now is you're going to have a bunch of Tesla customers who, you know, if they opt into the free trial that experience this uh, software that should allow them to drive the car, drive itself in almost all situations outside of parking lots. But I think there is a software coming out uh, update for that. And we'll talk about that in a second, because that's very interesting, too. Uh, it could significantly increase the number of people that are now signing up for the software, especially if it's 199 bucks a month. It's a lot more palatable <laughs> to pay 199 per month than $12,000. Now, I think what's also interesting about that pricing is a majority of Tesla owners, now new Tesla owners, and really existing Tesla owners, I would argue, in the United States, which is where this software is currently enabled, a lot of these people, I believe, are much more price conscious. They don't have the ability of, let's say, a person who bought a Model S or an X for, say, eighty to one hundred thousand dollars. Twelve thousand bucks may not be that big of a step for them, but for most people, twelve thousand bucks, especially as it pertains to a software that's very new and essentially no other car has, uh, where you can just download it and the car drives itself everywhere. You know, there's level two, level three systems in other car makers, but those are very limited in their use case. 
I think the people that are uh, not as can afford twelve thousand bucks will be much willing, much more willing to pay one hundred ninety nine bucks a month, as long as it does what the company says it's going to do. Now, from the standpoint of usability, as I've been using this software, the one thing that I've noticed is that it's so much more human like in a lot of situations that it gives me as the driver a lot of confidence that the car understands what's going on around it. It's not perfect though. I have 12.3 version 12.3, which is one behind the version that's out there right now, 12.3.1, which uh, from the sounds of it, it addresses a lot of the issues I've been having as far as keeping the quote unquote right speed in areas. Sometimes it's a little bit under the speed limit where it really should be at or flowing with traffic. But 12.3.1 addresses that. And then there is another plan of releasing a new update in about two weeks, <laughs> two weeks, 12.4, uh, which will uh, fix the company says or introduce three major features. And what we're hearing so far is that these features are likely to be the ability for the car to park itself in any situation, the ability for the driver to just tell the car to go park itself. So it, it will essentially, uh, you know, you get to a spot, it drops you off at curbside or like, let's say at the mall, and then you tell it, go park yourself car, and then it will go find a spot and park itself. The other one is summoning. So you are coming out of that mall and the car is parked in a parking lot. You're like, come to me. You know, they call it actually smart summon or ASS. I don't want to get demonetized. I don't think I want to get demonetized from saying ass. I'll say it ass. There you go. And so the car will come and get you. And then the third one, we don't really know what that is. But what's interesting about that is that the people that are signing up for this free trial now, in theory, should experience a software that is pretty impressive. Really, it, it really truly is impressive. It's, you know, we don't know yet if it's gonna be usable by most people, but it's Tesla thinks it's ready to be put out there in the wild. It's very, very impressive. And then in about two weeks time, that same uh, customer base or people that have purchased that software, software are gonna get an update uh, in 12.4, hopefully, that's gonna introduce other say quote, quote unquote mind blowing capabilities on an already mind blowing product. And I'm wondering what that's going to do for the adoption of this technology. I, I really think that Tesla has an opportunity here that says, you know, buy our cars, we'll give you something that no one, nobody else has, which is the car would literally drive you around uh, to wherever you need to go. It will park itself, it will come get you. And the thought process I'm thinking over time is for them to slowly take away uh, the need for the driver to actually pay attention. And that's one key differentiator here between, let's say, a Tesla today and like a Waymo. A Waymo, you can hail for the cost of an Uber. I think it is. It's right around the cost of an Uber. And the car will just come pick you up and drop you off. There's no driver, right? But with the Tesla, you still have to pay attention. But in theory, as this software gets better and safety gets better, Tesla should be able to say, OK, it's clear and obvious that the more updates we do, the better the software is getting. You don't really have to pay attention. The car's got it. And so it could shift from this level two system, which is what this is right now, which is you have to pay attention to a level three system, which means that as a driver, there are situations where the car will say, don't worry about it. Go on your phone, take a nap, whatever you want to do. I got it. And then when I need you, I'll just let you know, let's say, let's say 10 to 15 seconds prior, I'll wake you up or whatever. And then I expect you to take control again. And the only thing that needs to change between that level two system and that level three system for Tesla to get there is just safety. They just have to get to a point where they're confident that the car will be able to travel safely in those situations without a car having to pay, without a driver having to pay attention and that they're willing to take on the responsibility because that doesn't even work until, unless Tesla is like, if it's in level three mode, we're not going to take, uh, you, we're going to take responsibility. Tesla is. The driver won't have to take responsibility. Tesla will take responsibility. And so now you can see that there's like a groundwork laid, I think, where with the improvements they're making to their hardware compute stack at Tesla. Uh, the company has said that they're at a point now where they're not um, hardware constrained, which basically means that they have 
all the compute power, all the H100 chips from, Invi from NVIDIA, basically all the chips that are needed to process, all the data that they need to process, they no longer need more. They're at the point now where all the data that comes in, they can process and make the system better and better and better. And if you've been following this channel, you know that the way Tesla makes the system better is by using a sort of a quote unquote AI brain at their headquarters to process all the video data. So now Tesla's confident that they have all the hardware they need to process all the video data. And the next bottleneck is going to be uh, <laughs> transformers, which are basically it's, it's a complicated sort of thing. Um, Wait, I don't even know how to explain this uh, plainly. They're going to have another thing that they're going to uh, have a bottleneck with, but it's no longer compute. It's more related to uh, power and electricity. So, yeah, it's very interesting to see now. It, it, this is a very fascinating time in, in the world of Tesla, if you follow the story closely, where this is something that one has felt has been in the works for years and always overpromised, always underdelivered. And now it seems like the company is like, yeah, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Check it out. Car can drive itself. What do you think? One month free trial. A lot of implications here. I'm going to go to Q&A. Uh, we're going to do an extended Q&A session today. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Uh, I have producer wife. Producer wife is going to help me out. He's helping me out with this uh, live stream. Soon to be producer mom <laughs> with producer baby. And um, yeah, we'll start the comments and we'll go through it and see what, what folks, uh, what questions you have in comments. Uh, here we go. So this is from Alex. Uh, the problem with FSD is that it's a safety system, but if Tesla cha charges customers extra money for a safety system, it's a really bad look. Yeah, I, I don't really see it as, a, uh, you know, I think safety is part of it. You know, I think, I think the point that Alex is making here is that FSD, because it's a self-driving car, in theory, a self-driving car is not really going to make a lot of mistakes, right? You would think a computer can drive better than a human, assuming that it's doing that, right? So from that perspective, absolutely, it's a safety system. But the key thing we have to keep in mind here is that by default, if you're riding in a car where you don't have to pay attention, you have bought a bunch of time back. So when you're driving around today, um, you not only paying for gas, you're not only paying for the loan, you're not only paying for insurance, but you're also paying with time. You're paying with your time of having to actually pay attention and drive the car and make sure you're not going to die. That time is valuable. People, I mean, the economy works because people are willing to exchange time for, for money, <laughs> you know, like that exchange. You know, for example, I hired somebody to do my lawn uh, a week ago to just kind of, you know, clean it up and, and do a bunch of stuff to it. I could have gone out there and done it myself, but it would have taken me, you know, two days, three days, and I would have hated every step of it. Instead, I took a portion of my money and I said, are you willing to do that instead of me? And that person's like, of course, I would love to do it. And then we made that exchange. That's what FSD will do here, I believe, long term with Tesla is that people will be will, there will be a price somewhere where people are going to be like, I am willing to pay X dollars so that I don't have to pay attention. But the system has to get to a point where the driver doesn't have to pay attention. I don't think there's going to be gigantic take rate for the software, meaning that there, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people actually um, signing up for the software until it gets to level three where you don't have to pay attention. There's about 1.8, almost 2 million Teslas on the road today in the United States that can are capable of downloading FSD. They have hardware three uh, software on the car or hardware on the car. And with this free trial, maybe you get 20% of those people that sign up for that trial long term. We'll see. But as the and I could be wrong here, I'm just guessing just like I do with everything else. I'm educated guessing anyway. Um, the way for that to get better for more people to sign up is for the system to get better and better to the point where you don't even have to pay attention. And I think this is where where this whole thing's going. So I don't think it's a bad look at all. I think it's a strategy that Tesla can employ because they have the cutting edge technology of updating the software on a car that's potentially five years old to the point where it can drive itself. And yes, you're going to get a giant safety boost from it, but you're also going to have a situation where people are going to be like, holy crap, this car that I can buy for, you know, $33,000, $34,000 after the EV tax credit will just drive me around and I don't have to pay attention at some point, right? That becomes a giant 
lever for Tesla to pull from a business perspective. And I think there will be a lot of people that are willing to pay something, 100 bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, whatever people think their time is worth, they'll pay. And that's where Tesla is going to have to figure out the market clearing price for this, right? They have to figure out supply and demand. What are people, gonna, what are people willing to pay for the software that's going to save them time on the road? That's how I think about it. Jay Lizard, thank you so much for a three dollar um, sticker. Really appreciate you, man. Let's see. They should let current owners have a free month as well. Yep. So that's exactly what they're doing. So if we go to the post from Elon Musk replying to Holmars, all U.S. cars that are capable of FSD, which is about 1.8 million cars in the United States, will be enabled for a one month free trial this week. So it's uh, definitely coming. And I, I agree. I think that's a very smart idea uh, for them to do that. Um, thank you for your question or your comment. What will happen if there is an accident in terms of FSD's release? Yeah, that's a great, that's a really good question. So what's important to keep in mind here is that this current version of FSD, even though it's called full self-driving, Tesla um, is still requiring the driver, in this case, to pay attention to the, the car, and they're ultimately responsible for, uh, for anything that happens to the car. So they're actively monitoring the system. And you can't turn on the, the software unless you agree to that in the car. Some people have an issue with, with, the, with the terminology of calling it full self-driving when you, with, you know, not when you still have to pay attention and be responsible, but, but Tesla does ask the driver to pay attention. Now, if any accidents do happen, I do think you know, if we think of it from a, there's two way, different ways of thinking about it. From the perspective of Tesla, they're still going to claim that you have to pay attention and that you enable the software knowing you had to pay attention. But then from the standpoint of public perception, I think if they go wide with this and it's not a smooth sort of thing where people are able to use the software correctly, then I do think that's going to look bad on Tesla for sure. Because then people will say, well, you're not taking enough steps to ensure that the software is being used safely and stuff like that, which I think is valid. So I think that's what's going to happen. Tesla's going to be in the clear anyway, because legally they're going to be protected because you turn on the software knowing you have to pay attention because it's clearly outlined on the screen. But then if it doesn't work, then it will say, well, why are you putting this thing on people's hands? That sucks, <laughs> right? And that's this is a very interesting time in the company's arc because they're putting out there in the same way that they released electric vehicles in the first place and people were like, oh, electric vehicles are, you know, they blow up and they catch fire and stuff. And there was all this like fear and uncertainty and doubt that was related to that. This is now beginning for self-driving, like truly in earnest, this in earnest earnest this is really the big the true beginning of that this software has been in beta for a solid three four years however long it's been but now it's getting in the hands of the masses and now the masses will get to experience a very 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 refined version with a brand new approach with the end-to-end -end neural net of the ai brain that is now driving the car. It's an AI driving the car. It's no longer humans coding to drive the car. It's an artificial intelligence driving the car. So we'll see. Very interesting time. It is not without risk. There's actually some pretty massive risks attached to this, but this was the company's plan all along. And then unless they execute at a very high level, it could turn into a big mess. So there I completely 100% agree. We'll see. The company has a good track record of doing difficult things. So we'll see. Uh, will Elon's proclamation apply to vehicles that I would test drive at the showroom? Um, probably, right? That's a very good question. We'll find out by next week. I think if they're giving a free trial to everybody in the United States and they're also having all new cars sold have the software, one would think that the cars in the showroom will also have FSD. So maybe starting next week, at the latest at this rate, Anybody who goes to the showroom and gets a test drive might be able to experience FSD. We'll see. It would be smart for them to do that if they're confident in the software. What is in store for April Fool update? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, a, a good joke. <laughs> Hopefully, they, they deliver with a good prank. Uh, when do you believe SNX will ship with front bumper camera and ambient lighting upgrades? Thanks. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Probably, if I were to guess, probably in the second quarter. I know they're working on uh, adding that stuff at the factory in Fremont from the from the rumors of it. But 
I would think sometime in, in Q2. But the thing about SNX, what's interesting about that is that it's such a small percentage of their of their lineup that it's almost like very few people are paying attention to that because all, all the focus is going to be on FSD, Model Y, Cybertruck, Model 3. Uh, but the front bumper camera is an interesting one because the front bumper camera is on Cybertruck and Cybertruck uh, has hardware 4 and people don't know if that front bumper camera is supposed to be used for FSC. I'm guessing yes, because it's there. So, and then the other question becomes, will that be part of the all the other cars as well, like the three and the Y long term? So, but I don't know. I would guess Q2 for those two cars. Thanks for the question. Uh, when do you think this will be introduced in Europe? <sighs> yeah, that's a million dollar question. So we're talking about FSD. Right now, FSD is enabled in the US. It looks like it's going to be enabled in Canada here very soon. The, the Rohan, uh, which, who's one of the spokespeople for Tesla, has been talking about the software being available in Canada uh, very, very soon. Um, I do think Europe is going to be one of the last ones to be on this software uh, because there is the regulatory setting in Europe is vastly different. They much more uh, are they're more restrictive than the United States, let's say. And the United States is more uh, on a state by state basis where, where you'll have self-driving cars, let's say, where you can operate a robo taxi in Florida and Texas, but maybe New York doesn't want to do it. Right. And the other thing to keep in mind too, is that Europe, uh, the roads are very different than the roads here in the United States. They're much more narrow. You have to negotiate much tighter spaces. Generally people drive a lot better. <laughs> Out here is very different, um, but maybe w one of the things that I read was that they're work they're potentially working on something where they're going to enable this kind of software starting in 2025 or the end of 2025. But Europe is going to be probably one of the last ones. I think it'll be in China and Canada and other countries as well, well before Europe. So it's going to take a minute. I'd be surprised if it comes. the The only way for it to come faster is if Tesla can prove that it's a giant step up in safety. If they can do that, then I think Europe will adopt it quicker, but it's still gonna take a minute. It will be in the US, um, yeah, it will be in the it'll, it'll be in the US and it already is really, way, way, way before anything uh, happens in Europe. And I think most other countries will get it before Europe as well. Uh, thank you so much for the $5 super chat, slower cuber. Uh, what if we have hardware four with latest updates? Um, will that come later? I believe that hardware four is already getting the FSD update and it looks like it's at parity with hardware three. There doesn't seem to be any like discernible differences between the two hardware. Um, but it, it does sound like every single car in the fleet, if, if you have hardware three, hardware three and a half, hardware four, you will get the update. Cybertruck is the only exception it looks like because Cybertruck for some reason still doesn't have any uh, driver assistance features turned on, which I'm guessing is because they don't have the camera cameras properly properly calibrated for that form factor for FSD. So who knows what's going on there? It is kind of a miss there. I, I do believe that they don't have it there yet, but it should come soon. But yeah, I believe hardware four would get it, and I believe it already has. So if you have a hardware four car, you should have the trial sometime this week. I think new Tesla customers should have to own the car for 90 days before they get their free month FSD. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting comment, but I think I think the way that the company is looking at this is that they probably have data that says, listen, this is going to be safer for the driver as long as they monitor it. So it's, it's a safety issue to a point. So keeping that from our customer base seems like a silly idea. And then the other thing too is I don't think there's any benefit in, in withholding a software that could massively benefit the valuation for the company long term. And it could massively benefit the, the the viral factor of owning a Tesla where everybody's like recording themselves with a Tesla car driving them around. Uh, maybe the, the thought process is, is like, hey, let them sort of get used to the car and everything before you dump this on them. But I, I think from a strategy perspective, that makes a uh, little sense. Interesting thought. Why does church, uh, why does Tesla charge money for a software we're helping train? They should charge when it is ready. That's a fascinating question. And it's something that that's very interesting about the sort of the way Tesla has approached this, where Tesla is training a self-driving AI brain and people are paying them 
to test it. <laughs> you can't test the software unless you're uh, essentially, or you haven't been able to test the software, quote unquote, unless you were paying for full self-driving. Now, the, the, the flip side to that is that I've personally have gotten benefit from full self-driving where it's driven me around and I feel comfortable using it and things like autopilot or navigator and autopilot on the highway are truly game changing features for long road trips. But that's that's the equation. That's that's where Tesla has been able to release a very wanted product that people are willing to pay for. Um, and then they're using that money to fund a compute operation at their headquarters where they're creating this AI brain. And then this AI brain is learning how to drive. So I think the opposite, I think it's a super valid question, a very interesting thing to think about. But I think the opposite of that, if we think about it the other way, is that Tesla probably wouldn't have had nearly as much data at its disposal unless they had a method like this where they were essentially maximizing the number of people that would train it versus them paying people to train their software. I do think it would have been more limited because now Tesla has to figure out how to take a portion of the profits to pay people. Instead, they're getting paid for people to download the software and collecting data from that. And they feed it to a computer and the computer gets better, which can collect more data and more people will come in. And then the system gets better and they collect more data and then more people will come in and then the system gets better and they get more data and more people come in. Right. So it's like a flywheel. It's a flywheel that they've created. So, yeah. And, and the free trial, I think, is a signal that says, hey, we feel like we are at the point now where most people will find value in this. Thank you so much to everybody who has purchased the software and has been using it. We really appreciate you. We love you is what I'm guessing <laughs> they're thinking. I could be wrong. Here's everybody. Everybody else can do this. And now those people, you know, they, they have a one month free trial. They could be like, holy crap, this is amazing. I'm going to pay 199 bucks a month. So, yeah, super valid question. I think it's just highlights how unique the strategy is that Tesla has taken to to get this thing in the hands of people. Uh, question, would auto summon and parking not be considered level three by NHTSA? That's a, that's a really good question that actually, I don't know. I don't know if anybody has uh, thought about that in the comment section below level three, for those that are not familiar, essentially means that the driver, excuse me, the driver doesn't have to pay attention, but I do wonder if parking lots are considered differently. Maybe parking lots don't fall under the same jurisdiction as like roadways. Uh, maybe parking lots are private property and NHTSA doesn't have any, uh, I guess oversight over over private property, and but roadways are public property, right? Roadways are paid for by the ta taxpayer, and so they govern that space. But the second you exit the road and you go into a parking lot, then you're private private property, and private property you can do whatever. And it would be up to the business to say no self driving cars here, right? So the the typical you know how we thinking about level two, level three, level four might not apply there. It's a really good question. I could be wrong. What I just said there, but Perhaps that's why they can get away with it. Uh, will insurance be lower because they are safer? Fantastic question. Um, AO, really good question. Theoretically, if there are less injuries and less deaths because of the software, insurance rates should go down. And the company that has the best data to understand this is Tesla because they have all the data, uh, not only with self-driving, but they also have data around anytime there's a collision with the car, airbags going off, right? And they offer their own insurance. So in theory, this could be a very big sort of lever that Tesla could pull as self-driving becomes more and more common and it truly does bring down injuries and deaths. Tesla could have a one-stop shop package where they can be like, buy the car or release the car. It comes with self-driving software. Oh, and it comes with insurance and the insurance is pennies on the dollar as long as you use self-driving, which in a way could subsidize the price of self-driving. Isn't that interesting to think about, right? If self-driving actually does get you to a point where you're getting into, say, 10x to 100x less accidents or deaths 
because you're using the software. In theory, you could reduce rates by 10x to 100x. And depending how much you're paying for insurance today, like let's say you're paying 150 bucks a month or 300 bucks a month for insurance, and all of a sudden you're paying 50 bucks a month, then you're, that, that money you saved could be put towards the FSD. Super, again, like the, the economics of a self-driving car are so insane. And we're like talking about it from that perspective. We're not even talking about the fact that you can have a car that can drive itself that doesn't need a driver when the driver is like 60 to 80% of the total cost of operating a car, sometimes even more, depending on where you are. You remove that variable and all of a sudden your cost per mile becomes like almost nothing. And then when you have a company that can make millions of these per year, where the cost per mile is almost nothing compared to a car that needs a driver, where the car only costs like 30,000 bucks to make versus a Waymo that costs $200,000 to make. When will Ford step in? Um, there has been rumors that Tesla and Ford, uh, well, they've been, they, Ford, what's interesting about this question is that Ford was the very first one that adopted NAX, so the North American Charging Standard, which is Tesla's plug for the charging network. And that, you know, uh, Elon and uh, Jim were on a space together on, on X talking about it. And there's rumors, of course, rumors are going to be floating around with this because this is an obvious extrapolation here. People are like, well, the same thing is going to happen with FSD, where Ford's going to license FSD from, from Tesla. Um, we'll see. I think there, there's a lot of potential here that if Tesla can prove that this software actually works and people like it and people use it and it reduces injuries and it reduces deaths and it's safe and it's fun. And then over time, you can stop paying attention. It becomes a very big differentiator uh, if you do have that hardware and software and if you don't. And a, comp and a company that doesn't have that hardware software, they're going to have a very difficult situation or proposition where they're going to have to be able to sell a car against a competitor who can say, not only are you going to pay about the same out the door, but if you start paying for the software on top of that, you're not even going to have to drive. So then the question becomes, what happens to the auto market when you have a player that has cars that can drive themselves versus players that don't? Will people choose the one that can drive itself where they don't have to pay attention to the road over time versus the ones where they do? And when we live in a world where time is extremely valuable and a lot of people drive because they have to, not because they want to, it gets weird. Um, question, what do you think of Chuck's opinion that the cars need new cameras at the front corners for better long range side views when the B pillar cameras might be uh, obstructed? Yeah, we've talked about this uh, multiple times on the channel. I appreciate the question. Um, I am not sold that that's the case because if you if you do this test when you're home, and it, uh, try doing it. Take your iPhone and then put it or your Android or whatever phone you have. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to uh, mislabel your phone. <laughs> Take the cameras that you have on your phone and put it next to the B pillar and just record a video. And the B pillar is that middle pillar where the camera's on the side of the Tesla. Then, then just keep recording and move that camera to the new position, right? And then check and see how much more the vantage point has changed. Check and see how much different the view looks for the road. In almost all cases, it's basically the same. You might gain like a foot or two on the road of more clearance, like of, of what you're looking at. But the the way the car compensates for that foot that's you potentially lose out on is just by creeping, right? And then the, the, the next question becomes, okay, so people are able to do it now, even when you can't leave her forward, you're only really moving like, like a foot or two forward. Do the same exact exercise with your phone. Just go from there to down there and then see how the vantage point shifts. It's not really that big of a difference. I think we feel like that's a big deal, but how the uh, cameras see that, it doesn't really change that much. I could be wrong. Or Chuck could be right. Maybe maybe Nitz is like, well, we have to ensure that every single variable is accounted for. We need cameras that are at the front that can look at the sides. But then the opposite question becomes, I feel like Tesla would have made the change already since they've had this hardware in their cars for the better part of six years. and eight years really. And all the, most of the data that they have has come in from the last two to three years, because that's when the fleet has gotten largest since the Model Y launched. And so not making a hardware change seems like a terrible idea if that was a limiting factor. So, but who knows, maybe they made a mistake and 
they have they have to make a change. So let's do a few more here. Might uh, question from Pete. Might providing a free trial dissuade those who might have purchased upfront to wait and see? Um, well, the ones who have purchased upfront, you mean like okay, yeah, maybe, maybe if if uh, people were planning on paying for full self driving the twelve thousand dollars, they're like, well, let me wait and see what the free trial does. But that's a good thing. As a consumer, like that's a great thing. Like twelve thousand bucks, let's say that's a lot of money for what almost everybody. That's a gigantic amount of money. So if Tesla's like try it out first and see how you like it, that's fantastic. Like I don't think that's the only place that that's bad is that maybe Tesla loses out on a few bucks because people are like, well, this is not as good as I thought. I'm not going to pay for it. But that's a good thing because that tells that Tesla that they have to get better at getting a software that is actually worth 12,000 bucks. Makes sense? So it's a win-win in my opinion. Tesla wins because their software gets better because they're getting proper feedback. And then the consumer wins because they're actually trying something out before they commit 12,000 bucks. Uh, unless they're signing up for the 199 monthly, right? Uh, is this the first stream where Farzad is sitting down? Isn't he always standing? I believe it is. <laughs> might be the second one. Might be the second one. Uh, but yeah, good observation. I can't do my like intro as, as good sitting down, but we'll see. All right. And then last one, happy late. No ruse. Thank you so much. Kayvon. I appreciate you. Kayvon my brother's uh, name as well. So thank you so much for the $2, uh, uh, super chat. Okay. Let's end it there. Thank you all so much. I appreciate all y'all stepping in and, and, uh, hanging out with me. We've had 4,400 live viewers between X and YouTube for this stream. So thank you all very much for stopping in. I hope you have a, have a fantastic day. If you'd like this content, like, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, links in the description below. We'll see you in the next one. We'll do more live streams. Bye, everybody.